Um, so I'm going to talk about a two-year project that I've done um, with cucumber research and breeding. The first year also included melons, um, but mostly I'm going to talk about cucumbers because that's been the bigger focus. Um, our project is called Commonwealth Seed Growers. Um, and I have a little bit about myself. I've been growing seeds for small seed companies in Virginia for about 12 years. And four or five years ago, uh, me and several other growers started this project, Commonwealth Seed Growers. Um, so we do seed production, and we also do some breeding and research work. Um, just a few slides here to show you uh, to show you uh, some examples of downy mildew. This is 2010. It's about when I start, started getting interested in focusing on downy mildew as a problem. We worked with a lot of cucurbit crops, uh, including cucumbers and winter squash and melon and watermelon. Um, and this is a cucumber seed crop that was heavily hit by downy mildew, and I was starting to think about what to do about it. Um, this is a 2013 cucumber downy mildew trial we did. Uh, you can see there's some here that just didn't hardly really even grow. Um, so this was starting to get into the trial. In 2014, we got a SEER grant and did a much bigger trial. This is the cucumber part. Um, evaluated about 35 different cucumber uh, seed stocks, some of them from the USDA, germ positive bank. Um, and we actually identified some of the, the parents for our breeding work in that child. Um, so the, the 2018 and 2019 project, and this is, um, this is funded with a grant from OFRF. Um, we had a bacterial wolf trial in both years, a uh, down and early trial on our farm in 2018. Um, in 2019, we did the downing mildew trials at remote locations. We worked with other farmers and researchers to do the downing mildew trials. And then also, both years, we had uh, breeding trials at our farm. So, um, start with the downing mildew trial. We, we, we decided that it was important to, do, to evaluate the downing mildew and the bacterial wilt separately, because if they're all in the same trial, it can be hard to tell which is which. Um, so the, the downy mildew trial, what we do is we plant it late and we evaluate the yield. Um, and by late, I mean like July. Uh, it's a lot later than most people plant cucumbers. Um, so we measure the yield and then we also look at the foliage. And um, here's a picture of the trial. You can see some pretty heavy downy mildew impact there. This is both melons and cucumbers here. Um, this is a field day we did in 2018. Again, you can see some pretty heavy downy, downy mildew impact. Um, it's a little bit middle of September, so kind of bad. Um, so just a quick run through of results. The visuals can be a good, good way to get a, a picture of it. Homemade um, pickles, it's a commercial variety that did, does better than average for downy mildew. Um, this is a variety bred by Cornell University, Mike Mazurek at Cornell. Um, you can see it doing pretty real well. Um, it has good down and mildew resistance. This is our breeding line, um, also doing well for down and resistance. Um, this is Mark Moore 76. So you can start to see like that there's pretty dramatic impact of the disease. Um, DMR 401, another one from Cornell, it's doing well. Uh, this is a new line from Cornell, it's not doing as well, but it has maybe better food quality. Another one that's doing terrible. Uh, this is a gherkin that uh, has really good downy resistance. It's got these um, interesting shaped fruits that make good pickles. Um, so, Quick look at, at just a sample of results. Um, we, it's important, we think, to look at both yield and foliage because if you have a plant that has great foliage but it's not producing any fruits, um, 
it's not really, the plant isn't really being challenged because it's not having to put its energy into the fruits. So we look at both. Um, so the ones that did, you know, Market More 76 is our kind of our control, uh, 3.8 pounds per plant. Um, the downy mildew foliage rating um, on September 13th, nine means the plants are all dead. Um, and then you look at DMR 401. Uh, yeah, DMR 401 it has a much better yield and a better foliage rating, 7.5. The plants are still pretty unhealthy at that point, but this is very late in the trial. Um, and then our seed stock, our DMR seed stock, had the best yield in the trial and had the best late foliage rating. So we were really excited about this, and we, um, in 2019, we proposed a project that really focused on looking at different lines of our breeding population and um, in, in, in diff different locations away from our farm um, and um, continuing the breeding work. Um, so this is mid-September pictures um, and anyway, uh, we were you know, we were, we were thinking that, that ours, that our line was doing better than the Cornell line, and we were excited about the potential. Uh, it looks like this year there, it's coming out a little bit different, and we're still sorting through the data. Um, so, the bacterial wilt trial, we do it separately, so that we don't get down in Italy, we just want bacterial wilt. Um, and, and to do that, we plant real early. We don't use any row cover to um, to control cucumber beetles. Um, so here's the trial early. Um, we plant a lot of plots. It's five applications of each one. I don't know. Um, um, so methods: five applications per seed stock, and just three plants per plot. And we're not measuring yield. We're just looking for dead plants. Um, just looking for plants that are either getting severely damaged or dying from bacterial oil. Um, and there's a child very late. Um, at this point, actually, some down mildew was, was, was present, so it's not really the best picture. Um, so child results. Um, I think it's a little bit difficult to evaluate bacterial wilt because the beetles can move through the field in a um, not a regular, not exactly a regular way. Um, that's why we had five applications, but I think we kind of need more data to be able to say something conclusive about what varieties do better with bacterial wilt. Uh, so just real quick, cucumber beetles transmit bacterial wilt. Um, but we did get some information that indicated that our breeding lines were, were maybe above average on, on bacterial wilt um, tolerance or resistance. Uh, and interestingly, market more 76 in 2018 had no damage, and then in 2019 it had heavy damage from bacterial wilt, so we're not sure what that's about. Um, so I'm going to get into the breeding trials now. How about five minutes? You have, you have a little over five minutes. Okay. Um, in 2018, we actually did an early, we did two generations of breeding trials. So this is the early one. Uh, I'll talk more about the breeding trials for 2019, but I'm going to show you pictures. Uh, this is the late season 2018 breeding trial. It was extremely wet. Um, so the 2019 project, um, Again, we had the remote, remote trials was a big focus there. Um, and we had separate pickling cucumber and slicing cucumber breeding, breeding trials. Um, so this is a picture of the um, pickling cucumber breeding trial. Um, so we had 270 plants, and we all should have a handout that talks a little bit about this. Um, and it says 350 plants in the handout, but we eliminated some of them because they were kind of in the shade um, at the back of the field. Um, there was one selection that was bitter that we got rid of. So 
the, our technique is that we use flags, these flags to record, we put hash marks on them to record the yields. Um, and we also put notes about flavor. So we go through and we're, we're taste testing the fruit and also recording the yield. And then we also record um, foliage ratings. Um, and um, so just a little bit of a timeline of that project. The other interesting thing that we do is that we, we evaluate the yields and the food quality for about two weeks. And then we start hand pollinating so that we can get um, we can get crosses of the best lines. Uh, some more pictures from the feeding trial. Um, we had a variation of, of uh, the average yield was 21 fruits per plant. The best yield was 54. We definitely saw a lot of variation in the feeding trial, and we're excited about the selections. Um, and you can see here. This is um, F3 fruit, and this is the fruit this year. So it's looking uh, more like a pickler. Um, and again, the sheet I handed out has more information about the origins of uh, the, the population, the breeding population that we're working with. Um, and real quick, on the remote trials, we don't have uh, a lot of the information yet. Um, we didn't, didn't get the information from the North Carolina AMT trial yet, unfortunately. Um, but that should be out soon, and I'm excited to incorporate that into your final presentation. Uh, that's Sandra Goo on the right from North Carolina AMT. Um, and um, so, the next steps um, we don't have a grant for next year, but I am going to. Continue doing breeding trials and sending out material for farmers and researchers to give us feedback on. So please contact me if you're interested in trialing or giving us feedback on material.